<laughs> now coming to 17.5c and 5d these are again very important so here in seven, what is the distinction between 17.5c and 5d see for the sake of clarity i'm sharing the provisions also because then it sets a foot forth i know many of you may be knowing all these provisions clear but still for the sake of clarity of the whole house i'm just sharing the provision then i'm getting into the places of discontent or the place of conflict which are there so in 17.5c what is there it's on the provision of was contract service for the construction of immovable property other than plant and machinery except when it is used for as an input service for further supply of was contract service and what is 17.5d 17.5d says that you are taking the goods or services and it is used by the taxable person for the construction of immovable property okay on its own account but here one important difference that you need to under we need to see is that whether we don't know if it's a clerical mistake or it's by intent is that other in the 175c it is said that other than plant and machinery okay and in 175d it is said other than plant or machinery so maybe the legislatures thought that when you are building something on your own make you know your Buying something on your own, you may create either a plant or a machinery, and that's why maybe they have gone with the definition. But uh, this this distinction is very uh, is very minute, and we are not sure as to why the word or has been used. And I have not got an answer to this. The last three years, I have gone through different materials, different forums, but we have not got clarity on this. However, coming to our view today, so what is important is that what is construction has been defined. in the particular uh, under the clause expression itself it says it includes reconstruction renovation addition alteration or repairs to the extent of capitalization to the immovable property so please remember bear in mind that even alteration or repairs if they are capitalized in the books of accounts they will also be treated to be construction why do i say so i am recently uh, uh, attending a matter of a shoe manufacturing company who have done major repairs or renovations okay they have not done overhaul of the factory but they have done some major repairs and they have capitalized the same in the books of accounts okay but at the same time they have availed the itc saying that it's a repair okay it is not a uh, main you know i i have not done any construction thing so please bear in mind that construction is related to capitalization here and of course to immovable property okay next is the plant and machinery has been defined as apparatus equipment machinery fixed to earth by foundation or structural support that are used for making outward supply of goods or services or both and here you need to understand that this plant and machinery they are used for making outward supply of goods or services okay so in many for in many places where it has been discussed that lift is a plant and machinery but since it is not used for making the outward supply of goods or services or both and that's why it is not a part of I seventeen five C or D, and that's why you cannot the part of the exception. That's why you cannot avail the ITC. Going further, it includes such foundations and structural support, but excludes three things. What are those three things? Land and building, any civil structure, telecommunication towers, and pipelines laid outside the factory. So, what is land and building and civil structures? what is telecom towers and what is pipeline laid outside the factory premises these are very important that we need to understand apparatus and equipment they would mean that anything which enhances the production you know so maybe something i'm using in the production of the or supply of the goods or services and that is helping me to do that okay so when i'm buying a testing equipment for testing the water content the, the chlorine content in the water so that is the equipment that i'm using okay but here it is what is important is that machinery fixed to the earth by foundation or structural support so when i am using the works contract service for a plant and machinery which is fixed to the earth by foundation or structural support and that are used for making outward supply only here the different distinction needs to be coming in if it's a use in you know plug and play item then that's not where we are actually discussing about 175c and 175d now going further the uh, definition of works contract we know that works contract has to be defined in terms of immovable property unlike service tax and excise where it was about goods getting consumed with along with services here transfer on property and goods is important okay that is there is involved in the execution of contract but what is more important is that an immovable property should be generated out of this works contract and only then it will be known as this works contract finally 
the term immovable property. Immovable property has not been defined anywhere under GST. So we have to borrow it from the General Causes Act, where it says that immovable property means things attached to the earth are permanently fastened to anything attached to the earth. That's why when sliding doors, when sliding windows are attached to the uh, building and they're non-detachable, it has been held that ITC on the same is not available. Why? They are attached to that permanently fastened to anything attached to the earth. Further, if you go to Transfer of Property Act, wherein we have been told about what is attached to earth means. It means rooted in the earth, embedded in the earth, or attached to what is embedded for the permanent beneficial return. So we need to understand that while understanding immovable property, we need to understand the intent. That what is the purpose of because of which I have utilized these works contract service? Is my intent to use this for a longer period of time and to attach it to the earth or my intent is to actually move it from one place to another. And also the degree of attachment. That is also very important. Okay. So suppose I am putting something, a uh, signpost here, which says Arudhas, so if I put it, and tomorrow with the help of screwdriver, I can just open it and put it somewhere else. That means the degree of attachment is very low. Okay. I can just move it at the, at the soonest possible level, just like the solar panels. So these are some of the examples that have been given. Just for your sake, for the sake of illustration, since I believe that whenever I'm taking a presentation, there may be people who are starting afresh, you know, maybe, and also people who are already in the know-how or the know-how things. So, but considering everything, I just included this. Maybe at the time of leisure, you can go through this illustration because it doesn't have anything more. Only the last one I would like to say, an acting training academy, uh, this is an actual situation. They have built a, their head office and they have, uh, their office for actually, they have built a place for doing all the shooting and all. And they have bought all the building materials and the light services. So in this case, they wanted to know whether they'll get the ITC on the same. So I hope I know you cannot get it because this building you have created or you know you have prepared for yourself for doing this. So coming to the most important case of safari retreats in the, in the you know by Odisha High Court, wherein the provisions of Section 17.5D have been read down. And what was the main thing? Main the arguments that have been put forward was that. The cascading effect of the indirect taxes that was not being removed because of this. Why? Because the builder, he had to absorb the entire cost. And this entire cost, he was recovering from the people to whom he was giving the places on lease or rent. So that's why the blocking of the ITC would prove to be a double burden of GST on the builders. They further went on to say that this is also a violation of Article 14, Article 19, 1G. Why? Because the same. Till that time, actually, till that time, the builders are getting the credit. So, in case of commercial, in case of commercial construction, the builders are getting the credit. Even now, the builders are getting the credit. So, in that case, they are getting the credit when they are selling the uh, places before the uh, place of completion certificate. So, in that case, they are getting the credit. So, in our case, why will we not get the credit? That was the argument put forward by Safari Retreats. Okay. However, this matter has been gone taken up to by to the Supreme Court in the matter of an SLP, and the SLP is yet to be heard. It has been admitted, but yet to be heard. And so, let us wait for the final decision. But I would just like to say that there are a number of advanced rulings which have been filed based on this. Those all those advanced rulings they have been uh, rejected because saying that the safari retreats has not reached, reached its finality as of now. Now, going to some of the important and interesting uh, advanced rulings in this matter, which I am sure are going to help us in forming an opinion as to what we can do when we get the views of the client or the opinion for the when we need to express our opinion to the client. So in case of the Aichal Chirial, it was for a lease for the construction of the laboratory and they paid lease premium charges. So one-time lease rental. So since this is a service, so in this case, the ITC was not eligible. So they could not get the ITC. In case of Jabalpur hotels, the what they said is that we are making the hotels, you know, and in this uh, making of the hotels, we need to buy a lift. So in this lift is an integral part of the hotel. It is a part which is attached to the earth as we've just defined. And that's why the authority for advanced rulings felt that in this case, the ITC cannot be availed by the hotel. In case of KL of Nirmal Industries, it's a very uh, interesting judgment, wherein they have said that they are eligible to take the ITC to the extent of GST paid on design, engineering, supply, execution of roof, rooftop solar plant. So please be careful, friends, because we are getting many queries regarding solar panel and solar plants. So here, 
I would I request you to go through this particular judgment of uh, KLF Nirmal Industries by Art Tamil Nadu. So here they wonderfully shared that whatever solar panel is being used, this is being used not for the purpose of uh, anything else, but to generate electricity from which they can actually use uh, to for, by using which they can actually do the manufacturing process. And while delivering this judgment, they have relied, they have relied on the matter of collective simplex as a solar skeptic, a judgment of 2007, wherein a similar judgment was taken that when the solar panel is being utilized for generating electricity for doing the manufacturing activities, the ITC of the solar panel, the centered care of the solar panel was allowed. So if you are having a client who is planning to do this, then in that case, I would request you to go through that judgment, think over it, and then maybe give the opinion to the particular client. In case of Maruti Spark, it is about, uh, again, uh, they, are, uh, they, are, they are manufacturing uh, cards as it is, they are manufacturing into steels and all, and they have prepared a shed, okay? And they have prepared a shed for protection of the plant and machinery. So here it is said by the advanced, authority for advanced ruling that whatever shed you are doing, that is again a civil structure. And that is actually restricted as per the exception that is given from the plant and machinery. So that's why you cannot you cannot actually avail the ITC on that particular shed. But in my personal view, if I was a uh, particular uh, person handling this particular matter, I would have gone to the, the AAAR also. Because in this case, we need to understand that whatever shed I'm giving, that is for the protection of the plant and machinery, which would otherwise lose its lifetime and so may, may not get the proper utility. So because of that, this particular uh, shed has to be treated as a foundation or a structure for the planted machinery and not a civil structure as such. In the case of Mother Earth environment, this is again an interesting judgment wherein they said that landfilling plant, so what is happening to all for dumping all the dangerous gases by this particular uh, taxpayer, they had done a, they had constructed a landfilling pit wherein all the dangerous gases would be planted. So they said that since this is a civil structure, Okay, this is civil structure and immoral property which is affixed to the earth. So therefore, ITC was not eligible in this case. In Satish Brinkham, they say on the reverse. Just see in the previous case, in the case of a landfilling pit, the ITC was not allowed. But in Satish Brinkham, wherein the construction of buns for salt, you know, the buns that is required for salt and growing chemicals, in the case of construction of buns, the AAR Gujarat has allowed the ITC on that saying that these are actually planted machinery because only on the basis of these bonds only, you can actually manuf manufacture the salt. Okay? And that's why this is a part of the planted machinery and so you can avail the ITC. In case of Sundarams, who are providing warehouse storage and uh, support services belonging to automobile industry, in this situation, what happened is that they had built the paper blocks. Okay? They had built the blocks from their showroom to the room. And in this case, they said that no, since you have built this particular uh, paper blocks uh, on your own cost, and this is a part of the construction, and this is affixed to the earth, this is an immovable property, and therefore, even though you have created this particular place, the paper blocks, for parking of the cars, even then, you will not be eligible for getting the items. Okay, in case of Tarun Realtors, it is a similar matter like Safari developers, then in that case, they are also building the shop on and they had paid taxes on, you know, year handling unit lift, escalator, et cetera. And they said that we have bought this separately. So these are all planted machinery. And so we need to get an uh, ITC on this. So on this, again, there are divergent views because in case of one of my uh, clients who are quite aggressive, we have taken a view that the year handling unit is a separate part. The water treatment plant, sewage treatment plant, the generators, all these are separate parts and therefore we can avail the trade on it. But the stronger and the more aggressive the view, which is a restrictive view is that since the air handling unit, the AHU becomes a part of the building, it is actually an immovable property and therefore ITC should not be available on it. So that's why I've told, as I've told in the past also, please take a view from your clients. Only if they like this kind of mind, they're okay to go with the aggressive view and litigate the matter even up to Supreme Court if required, because they're of the firm believe that this is not towards a movable property, and these are simply planted machinery which are used 
to in uh, you know which are used for the uh, making the supply that they are making okay now coming to the next again a very interesting matter of western concessions what has happened in this particular thing is that there was a fsru which was built okay so it's a factory storage unit where it is storage unit so what was happening is that the pipe from the show to this particular storage it will come and the uh, it will stay and from here okay from here through the tie pipe tying pipelines it will go through the national grid so in this case the pipeline which was there the pipeline which was there the pipeline was outside the factory gate now what are the definition of factory taken here here the fs fr frsu was treated to be the factory okay so the advance author the triple a they have gone into the definite the detail of the discussion i would uh, request all my uh, friends to go through this definite to go to this discuss, uh, discussion in the particular matter because i'll tell you what i tell uh, to my team members and also many that please don't think that all the advance rulings are just you know given just like that in case of many advance rulings we have seen judgments which are very deep rooted which have discussed a lot of legal angles and that they have given so in this particular case they have given a judgment as to why this storage unit okay this storage unit will be treated as a factory why because the entire uh, refining of the oil the refining of the gas that's happening there and then it is being transported then it is being transported that's why the pipeline that are outside this particular unit those are being treated as pipelines outside the factory because as we have seen in just before some time that pipelines inside the factory itc is eligible pipelines outside the factory itc is not eligible so even in your case wherein you are having some doubt regarding what is a pipeline and whether it's inside the factory or outside the factory please read this judgment to understand that what will be considered to be a factory okay then we come to burkish sugar industries here it is uh, one of the interesting case laws that again you have to read i would suggest because it's a very important case law on csr activities and many of us are actually facing csr activities because of the uh, covid 19 situation and also because of the natural disaster that has happened here they have said that itc is not available to the extent of capitalization only so in this case since the company had given the avail works contract service they had bought some materials building materials and extra services for the construction of the school in terms of the csr activity since this is not capitalized in their books of accounts the itc on the same was eligible and allowed and i think this would be a uh, important judgment to look for where it we can actually think on this lines and suggest to our clients according in we work india management limited the what what is the judgment there that itc can be availed on detachable 14 mm engineer who will cook cook top to the wooden flooring so here again as i said sometimes before we need to see the degree of attachment so the table that i am sitting right now it is actually affixed to the earth okay to the screws and all but why is it affixed to the earth so that we cannot constantly shift it and it is not shiftable like right? so that is the reason but the thing is as soon as i open the screws i can just shift it to any place so similarly in the case of we work which was a shared office where many startups come together and work together in this case the judgment is that whatever detachable detachable furnitures they have been uh, used out there okay the materials for making the detachable furniture which are movable in nature because they can actually go from one premises to another because they are in the business of giving shared offices so they may shift their offices quite often so in that case they since these are detachable and these are changeable from one place to another they can be treated as not a part of immovable property in itc can be allowed but but here there is another catch which they said is that the detachable sliding and the stacking glass partitions that are there since this cannot be removed without uh, creating a damage to the walls that's why this cannot be treated to be not a part of immovable property that's why detachable windows which are there since they cannot be taken out without harming the building they are treated to be a part of the immovable property and in that case itc will not be allowed so in case of itc in case of telecom towers construction of telecom towers as you have seen it is exceptionally disallowed okay and it is said that it's, since it's becoming a part of the immovable property it will not be allowed and we need to understand that when it is installed on rental basis or given on lease in that case the itc is allowed so in that case there is no restriction 
So whether uh, telecom tower is movable or, or immovable, we have seen that uh, in multiple judgments, like in the case of Vodafone mobile case, it has been said that it is not a immovable property and it is attached to the earth. Okay, it is not a immovable property. Why? Because I can always shift this tower to some other place. Similarly, in the case of Bharti Airtel, also similar judgments have been given, as if we have been relying on solid and correct engineering works. And well, one important judgment that has, that has been passed in the recent past only in the matter of Bharti Exacom versus Commissioner of Central and Customs, uh, CGST Jaipur, where it has been held that CGS that send wet credit on towers and prefabricated shelters have been allowed. So we are saying that in a lot of most of judgments in the erstwhile regime, this has been allowed. And that's why in the current regime also, Airtel has again moved to the Delhi High Court. And we believe and feel that maybe we can see some positive judgments coming in the nature of telecom towers, because that is again one of the important things that is there for the sector to think. Section 17.5, I will not discuss much because this is regarding the supply that I have taken from composition levy. Of course, we cannot avail the ITC on that. 17.5F, in case of NRTP. So if you are availing any ITC from the, you know, this NRTP, they cannot uh, get it. Okay, so I have, so since the NRTP is uh, using the services here rarely and occasionally, so here, whatever services he is utilizing, he cannot get any ITC until unless he is importing the same. And on that, he has actually paid the tax on that. Okay, the ITC on the goods that he has imported. So please bear in mind because we are getting some queries on this particular thing also. Now coming to the next important thing, which is 75G, which says that no ITC shall be allowed when supply is used for personal consumption. Okay, so what is personal consumption? That has not been defined anywhere. So I'll just give you a recent uh, litigation that I'm handling. So in this case, what has happened? Uh, GST audit is going on. And during the course of audit, the audit department, they come in hold of an invoice, which reads as uh, where five agents have been purchased. Okay. And it's a bill to ship to invoice, bill to the company's address, ship to the address of the residence of the director. Now here, the department has taken a view that since the ACs have been shipped to the address of the director, it is beyond iota of doubt that yes, these are being used for personal consumption. So here we need to understand one important thing that what is the definition of personal consumption? Or is it so that since this director is a very senior person, I am bound to give him the AC at his residence also so that he can sleep comfortably. Okay, so that's why I have given the AC to him. So whether this provision of AC is in the furtherance of business or not, that would, that would again be a very important thing to decide. Okay, so like in the case of standard rules, okay, so there were some exclusions like inputs, there are excluded goods such as food items, goods used in guest house, residential colony, club, etc. In case of input services also, they had restricted some, given some restrictions as we have seen in 17.5, you know, uh, before. So 5B. So similarly, if all these goods or services, they are being used for the personal use or the consumption of an employee, then in that case, the ITC will be blocked. So if we discuss some practical examples, I think that will be more clear. So in this case, uh, it has been allowed in the matter of Reliance Industries. The Mumbai state has held that when you're paying the service tax on the group insurance premium, it should be treated as an input service. Why? Because that is out of my statutory obligation. I have to pay. I am actually securing the health of my employees or the life of my employees. So that's why it has been there. And similarly, in the case of Coca-Cola beverages, where the Commission of Central Excise has been held that outdoor catering is an input service, even though giving it to the employees, and it can be poor. But again, we need to come back to the regime of GST. In the case of POSCO India, Pune Proposing Center, here the Maharashtra AAR has held that since the guest house, Okay, or the residential accommodation or the hotel that has been provided to the general manager and the managing director for, for accommodation. That's why it will not be allowed. Why? Because this is for the personal consumption of the GM and NT. Okay, they could have read, stayed in their own homes. Why should the company provide for their stay and food and beverages and etc.? So that's why this was not deemed to be admissible and it was treated that this is a personal consumption. Another important judgment I would again read, request all of you to read. It's of the triple AR decision in the case of NALCO, National Emblem Company of India by Orissa triple AR, 
wherein this is the input tax credit of the tax payer on inward supply of input and input services for the maintenance of guest house, transit house, and training hotel and plantation with residence colony. ITC will not be admissible. Since guest house in the work for the employee is not in the course of furtherance of business. So whenever this particular guest house is being utilized, the into the facts of the matter was that the many employees are staying in these guest houses for months to go. So they're actually being utilized as residential accommodation by the employees there. And so the AR has held that since there's a kind of benefit or a purpose that you're giving, so there's actually a personal consumption. That the employees are having, and that's why no ITC will be available on the scene. Another important thing that we need to see in this particular judgment is that there are there's a concept of township, residential township that is there, and I'm maintaining the sewerage, okay, the water treatment plant, the generator, the road, the park, the uh, gardens, and everything. So here, whether it is in furtherance of the business, so it was again held in the same judgment that no. This is not in furtherance of, of the business because the residential, I'm doing this in a residential colony. This is supposed to be done by the employees. So whatever I'm doing for them, it is actually a part of the perks that I'm paying them. And so it should not be treated as doing as being done in the furtherance of business. But the company argued that if I don't do this in the residential colony, then they cannot live. If I don't handle the water treatment plant, the sewerage plant and all, then they cannot live. So they cannot work for the company. So in that way, it is actually in the furtherance of business. But the authority of advance, triple AR, uh, appellate authority of advance, means they did not take this view. And they said that, no, it's purely for personal consumption of the employees that you are providing the service. And so the ITC is not available. In the matter of the Chennai Port Trust, here what had happened, the medical equipment and apparatus and consumables, they were used in the in-house hospital. So here again, since the, the goods or the service or the services they were being used for the in-house hospital, they are actually not being allowed and they have been treated as services or supplies for personal consumption. Okay, so another matter when I see this, another matter that I have recently seen and which many of us will be facing due to COVID-19 situation, work from home situation, please be prepared for that. And I would request you all to prepare your documentation from right now. And what is that matter? The matter is that the work from home is going on and I have a client who are into IT enabled service and for 900 of their employees, they have got furniture, that is the tables, laptops, the, in some cases, the routers, pen drives and the internet services and everything. Hello everyone. We are connecting with the professor so that the webinar will be continued. Please wait.
Hello, sir. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir. Your voice is audible, sir. Sir, please share oh. your screen, sir. Ah, so that the PPT will be done. Yeah, yeah. Sir, are you able to share your screen? Yeah. Yes, sir. But it is not visible right now, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. Uh, can can you can you share it from your end? Uh, yes, sir. I am just downloading the same. So that it is safe from my screen. Sir, can you please tell me a uh, number of slides on which you have? Slide number. So that I can. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Sir, is my voice is audible, sir? Hello. There is some technical glitches. We will resume this. Please. Yeah. So, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Your voice is audible, sir. Okay, fine. I'll yes, just sir. keep the video off because of my network issue. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So as I was just sharing, uh, so I'll just take one minute to go back. Yeah. <clears throat> so we were sharing about the Chennai Port Trust. Yeah. So we were sharing about the Chennai Port Trust. Wherein this, uh, I was, so I was sharing about the work from home thing. So about the work from home. So what is happening is that this particular uh, company who has given so many furnitures and then uh, the laptops and systems to their employees. So in this case, they had raised a question that these employees, they are also using this particular assets for their personal consumption also, because we cannot say that they are always uh, doing their work. So sometimes they may be watching Netflix and, uh, you know, doing Google and uh, they may be, even their children may be studying on the same systems and all. So there could be a doubt regarding this. So here we would like to say that uh, considering the present situation that we are in, it is as per the government direction and the, uh, orders that we are working from home. And that's why our main purchase, our intention of buying that particular asset is to further our business or, or in the course of our business. And that's why it should not be treated that a portion is treated as personal consumption. And that's why we need to disallow that or reverse that particular ITC. So that is the view that uh, we are taking but in many cases, they are taking the view that this is personal and they're doing a percentage and they're reversing the ITC to the extent of their calculation. They are doing a calculation that 30% is used by the employee for personal purpose and 70% for the official purpose and all those things. But in my view, we need to see at the broader intention of the law that what the law intends to say is that whether you're using it for the furtherance or uh, in the in the in internet to be used in the furtherance of the business or not that i have done and so i would like to use that for the itc and avail the itc on the same now going to the next slide yeah 
So here it's about uh, clause 17.5H, which is again a very important uh, section, which says that uh, clause H 17.5 pertains to free gift samples, gifts, goods stolen, etc. So it is in respect of goods that are disposed of by way of gift or free samples. On this, this is not allowed. So now we will briefly share in the next in the next slide. We'll go to the next slide. Yeah. So here we will see the definition of gift. So what is the definition of gift? So since gift, gift has not been defined in the GST Act, we'll have to go to Section 122 of the Transfer of Property Act, which says gift as a transfer of certain existing movable or removable property made voluntarily and without any consideration. So we need to keep these two things in mind, whether whatever we are giving a sales promotion, are we giving it voluntarily and without consideration by one person calling the donor to another called the donor and accepted by or on behalf of the donor. So when I am doing a sales promotion activity, is the person in front, is he bound to accept what I'm giving? Or it is that this is what I'm giving. If he wants to take it, he will take it. If he does not want to take it, he will not take it. Right? So what is the meaning of the term sam sample? That has also not been defined. And so the dictionary meaning of sample is a small part or a quantity intended to show what the whole is like. So when I'm doing export of service, okay, so when I'm doing export of service and uh, I need to give a sample to their local indenter, so I'm showing that sample and giving the sample piece to the local indenter. So in that case also, ITC should not be disallowed because this is a thing that I'm giving to the buyer so that he can take a decision as to whether he would buy it for his main principle or not. Okay, now going to the next slide. In the matter of Sonu Bhatia, was a state of UP, uh, AI 1981. Here, the Honorable Supreme Court had the opportunity to discuss the definition of gift. So, what it just said that a gift is commonly defined as a voluntary transfer of property by one person to another, which we have just seen. A gift is a gratuity, an act of generosity, and not only does not require a consideration, but there can be none. Citing the definition, it has been observed by the Honorable Court that the concept of gift is diametrically opposed to the presence of any consideration or compensation. A gift has aptly been defined as a gratuity and an act of generosity. So when I'm telling that I'm giving a gift, it means I am doing a gratuitous thing. That means out of my uh, compassion, I want to actually really make this person in front of me happy. And that's why I'm giving this particular thing to that particular person in return for which I'm not taking any consideration from that particular person. So when I am actually giving a pen, to the person along with a particular goods, just because he's particular buying the particular goods, I want to I want him to buy the particular goods, and because he's buying the particular goods from me, I am giving him the pen. So in that case, whether it will be treated as a gift or not, that needs to be seen. Because if he's not buying the pen, then I'm not going to give him the gift. That is the if I'm not if he's not buying my product, I'm not going to give him the pen, and then whether it is a gift or not. Okay, so gold, gold coins given for achieving targets, whether this is a gift or not, that was a matter of discussion. One of the advanced ruling, authority for advanced rulings, they have cited that yes, this is a gift because you are giving it to the distributor when he has achieved a target. But in my view, in my personal view, that is not a gift. I'm giving the thing to him only because he could achieve his sales target. And this was a contractual obligation. It was known to both of us before this. And it is not that it is known for the first time. Then we'll go to the next slide. So what would be a gift? The Australian High Court in the case of Commissioner of Taxation was his backfield. Here they have said that the property should be transferred voluntarily, not as a result of contractual obligation. In this case, a person agreed to give. So here again, there is a diametrical opposite view, which where they're saying that if I'm giving something, okay, if I'm giving something as a part of the contractual obligation, then that cannot be treated as a gift. So that's why we need to understand that whatever jurisprudence is being evolving, that the our view that has taken that the gold coin will be a gift, we need to understand that what are the other views that are there and then give the advice or the suggestion to our clients. Now going to the next slide. This is again a hot topic which is being uh, throated upon in the days now, which is CSR activities. So pandemics and natural disasters, these are a cause for CSR activities mainly though in normal situation also it happens, but because of pandemics and natural disasters like the Amphan and the earthquakes and uh, other things that are happening. 
so what is happening is that uh, the reason for uh, the business organizations to be associated with all this csr activities which are coming in within the realm of itc is getting even more so in the earlier in the rs12 regime in the matter of sl propact it was held that sustainability of the company is dependent on csr without which companies cannot operate smoothly for long period as they are dependent on various stakeholders to conduct business in economically social and environmentally sustainable manner so that's why without this i cannot sustain my business and so this is not a matter of option rather this is not a matter of choice and i have to do it because i if i have to sustain my company i have to do my csr activity or else i cannot continue my company okay in the matter of honorable high court, high court of karnataka in the matter of milipur india here it is held that it is to discharge a statutory obligation when the employer spends money to maintain the factory premises in an eco friendly manner certainly the tax paid on such services would form part of the cost of the final products okay so what is happening is that in this particular factory there are lot of uh, uh, other environment pollutants that are being generated so in order to do a reduction in that they are actually maintaining the factory in a very eco friendly way so in this case it has been told that whatever expenses has been borne by the company towards this particular activity of maintaining the environment that can be treated as an uh, expense for the calculation of the overall cost and that on whatever is whatever expenses are taken in the calculation of the overall cost on that send back credit could be availed and so in this kind of csr activities where i am doing for the sustenance of the activity for the sustenance of my business or sustenance of the environment sustenance of say the forest sustenance of the water bodies then you can always say that it is in relation to the business that i am doing so coming to the next slide so again a doubt has been raised in many quarters as soon as we say that whatever csr activities you are doing this is not a gift you can do it and you can get the itc on it and view is coming that okay then will it be considered as a supply because under schedule 1 to cgst act activities to be treated as supply even if made without consideration are permanent transfer or disposal of business assets where input tax credit has been availed on such assets so here we need to understand that there are three aspects to it one is the permanent transfer or disposal second is the business assets third is itc has been availed so yes in the case of uh, the csr activities and all other uh activities the itc has been availed that is there it is also a business asset but whether this is a transfer or disposal that needs to be seen okay or i am giving this out of my compulsion under the statutory obligation that is there under the csr activities so in that case it cannot be treated as supply how can i treat say i am giving i am giving say 20000 uh, water bottles So I am a distributor of water bottles, and I am giving twenty thousand water bottles to a particular NGO, and the NGO is giving this to the not this not for profit organization is giving this further to all the people who have been affected by the flood. So in this case, can I actually consider this as a supply and raise an invoice on the particular NGO, or will I be suppose will I suppose to, or am I supposed to pay GST on the same? in my view this is not a part, the situation which has been considered in schedule 1 in schedule 1 the six situation which are considered are which are the assets which are being used by me on which i itc has been availed in the past and now i am actually transferring or disposing of them off in that case even if there is no consideration suppose i was using a ac in my office for maybe 3 years and now suddenly i decide that i am going to take this ac or laptop to my house and i don't give anything to the company so even if there is no consideration involved here this will be treated as a schedule one transaction and because uh, because uh, here i am transferring this particular asset without any you know i am transferring an asset where in i had availed the itc okay so in my personal view in case of csr activities schedule one will not be invoked so in case of polycap where however there was a judgment by the r kerala the wr kerala where where they said that since this is actually something which you are giving free without any uh, without any consideration so that's why this will not be treated as an itc and uh, this will not be treated as supply and so the itc on the same will be disallowed however in one of the recent judgments of 
in Dwarike Sugar Industries Limited. It has been a favorable judgment. Okay, so uh, we'll go to the next slide. Yeah, so this is the case of Polycap Wares, as I was discussing, that wherein Kerala Hari has said that since you're giving this free, so that's why what will happen that you will not get the ITC benefits on this. However, in the next slide, we'll see that in the case of Dwarike Sugar Industries, it has been wonderfully uh, uh, shared, or the ruling has been given that since you are giving the activities in the course of business, as it is compulsorily required to undertake CSR activities, it becomes an essential part of his business process as a whole and eligible for input tax credit in terms of Section 16. Okay, so in this case, though the act, though the things are given free of cost, or they have uh, you know used. ITC, which has been utilized for construction of a school or the free supply of furniture and fittings has been given, still, still in this situation, the ITC was available to the particular taxpayer. Next. So in case of Moksha Agarbatis and uh, in Page Industries, in all this concern, what is happening is that in Moksha Agarbatis, what was happening is along with Agarbatis, they were giving a dhup. So the R ruled that, no, we cannot say that you have actually taken some consideration along with Agarbati when you're giving, what you're giving for the dhup, you know, you're giving the dhup free. According to us, you're giving the dhup free, and that's why you cannot claim the ITC on the scheme. Similarly, in the case of Page Industries, it was said that whatever promotional materials, okay, whatever promotional materials or products you're distributing to the distributors or the franchise is free of cost. So suppose uh, Diwali is coming in and I have got a lot of uh, silver coins and I'm giving to all my clients, okay? And why am I giving this to all my clients? So that we have a stronger relationship in the days to come. So I'm actually doing this to promote my brand. But according to the view of the R, they're saying that the ITC on this particular thing, on this particular promotional items will not be available because I'm giving them free of cost. Similar judgments have been taken in, uh, similar views have been taken in Senofi India by R Maharashtra and, and also in Surfa courts. In Senofi, again, is a matter of uh, scheme, wherein it was that the, uh, it, it is in the next one. Next. No, before this, sorry. Yeah, last. Yeah, thank you. Senofi. Yeah. So, Senofi, India. So, in this case, what is happening is that uh, the, there, was a, there was a scheme going on, and if you achieve that target, you get a point, and then later on, you can reimburse that point and take the goods, uh, take the service of the goods that was available there. So in this particular case, what was happening is that they said that no, whatever expenses you are incurring towards this promotional schemes, you cannot get the ITC on that. So when the, the, the distributors are given any benefit because of the scheme, the ITC availed to give that benefit, you cannot get the ITC available on that. In Surfa courts, it was held that the, the company was giving benefits or promotional items or incentives or gifts to the painters who are actually promoting the products in other part to the companies or to the clients. So in this case also it is said that, yes, it is well taken that you are in the business of paints and you have to have a wonderful relationship with painters because they are the people who recommend your product uh, to the ultimate customer. But since, okay, since you are giving this without any consideration, this will be treated as a gift. And that's why you do not qualify a ITC on this. And so you cannot avail an ITC on this. However, with the way I've taken all the judgments where it has mostly been said, we need to understand and maybe we need to take a view on this wherein we need to understand whether this is actually a gift. Because in the case of the target schemes and all, what is happening is that only when you achieve the target, I'm giving you that particular TV, or the particular gold coin, okay? And so there is a quid pro quo, there is a contractual obligation. You have to do something in relation for which I'm giving this. So there is, that is not a gift. And that's why, in my view, that would be eligible for ITC. But yes, since so many contradictory view or negative views have come, that's why many clients are averse to availing the credit on sales promotion items. Next slide. So now we'll go to goods lost or stolen which is one of the final uh, things on the agenda. So here the definition of stolen or destroyed or written off is stolen is something when I'm taking without the understanding of the other person with the permission. Destroyed is when it's something badly damaged. And of course, written off is when I'm writing off. But here, one important thing in, in case of 17.5H, 
is that whether what would be the point of time when 175H has to be tested? Whether it is at the beginning when I'm getting the input tax credit, whether it is in the middle when I'm actually lost the particular goods and it was there in my warehouse for a long period of time and then I'm, I'm missing the particular item, I'm reversing it, okay? Or, uh, you know, whether it is for the raw materials or for the finished goods. So a lot of questions have come or it is for the uh, manufacturing losses or not, or for other users or not. So all these questions have come. So in my considered view, for inputs, we need to check it only when it is at the point of entry. So if I have received certain materials short, you know, I have got an invoice for maybe uh, 10,000 items and I've got 9,800 items only, I cannot avail the ITC on the 200 items because for sure, I'm going to get a credit note on that. And even in many situations, we have seen that credit note has not been received. But for all the reasons, we cannot avail the credit on that. And that's why in this case, the ITC has to be reversed. But in case of other things, you know, in the case of raw materials, which are lying and which are getting evaporated or which are having some other manufacturing loss, in that case, the ITC should not be reversed. However, in case of finished goods, in case of finished goods, if those are lost or stolen, we have to actually reverse the ITC for the quantum which is involved in that particular product at that particular point of time. So we'll go to the next slide. So this is a very important case law. I think we need to refer to this. Uh, people like all the consultants who are, we are actually uh, in the matter of we are handling manufacturing clients is a common thing. It's about manufacturing loss. So the Madras High Court has wonderfully shared that when you are making you know, billets and ingots from the scrap, and you're having some losses in the process. So that loss cannot be considered to be a loss as per 17.5H. And so no reversal of input tax credit is re required. While rendering this judgment in the matter of AR Steel and Alloys International, we'll now go to the next slide. So here they have clearly said in para 11 that the situation that set out, that set out above in clause H indicates loss of inputs that are quantifiable and involve external factors or compulsions. A loss that is occasioned by consumption in the process of manufacture is one which is inherent to the process of manufacture itself. So if the loss of stolen or loss is due to some external factors, I lost it while bringing the car, okay? I lost it while getting loading and loading done. I lost it, uh, you know, during the particular process before anything, before doing anything of this thing before getting it into the manufacturing process. So in that case, ITC has to be reversed. But if, any, but if the input quantity is lost and the quantity reconciliation is not matching because of the loss during the manufacturing process, in that case, the ITC does not have to be reversed. Herein, the High Court, Honorable High Court has relied on the, in the matter of Rupa and company, wherein it has to be, it has been held. It has to be understood in the context of what a manufacturing process is. If there is no dispute about the fact that every manufacturing process would automatically result in some kind of a loss, such as evaporation, creation of a byproduct, etc. The total quantity of inputs that went into the making of the finished products represents the inputs of such products in the entire. So I'm not supposed, I'm not supposed to give a quantitative reconciliation of the entire product because there is going to be inherently a manufacturing loss that is going to happen while I'm doing actually the manufacturing of the product. Similar view, we'll go to the next slide. Similar view has been taken in the matter of multi-metals and Aston, what is the Aston collector central excise? Okay, wherein they've said that the manufacturing loss forms part of the raw material used in the manufacture, though not reflected in the final product. Uh, since I have received a notice in this relation a few days back and uh, post the uh, receipt of this particular order, I could actually quote all these judgments. And I could go through these ratios and I could understand that loss in a manufacturing process means that that input has already been used. Why? Because till the point of utilization by me, I've actually used that particular product. It was not a loss or it was neither stolen. Therefore, anything which is lost in the manufacturing process or due to natural process like evaporation, in all these situations, the ITC does not need to be reversed. So, and the finally, in this matter, the, it was also held that we are also unable to understand the argument of the revenue based on the difficulty in arriving at the manufacturing loss. 
if there is any difficulty it is for manufacturer who claims the relief to prove the loss so the if we have to product we have to understand what is the manufacturing loss we can easily understand it why it was why why do you have to get into so complicated calculations however and recently we have another double ar ruling of gujarat ar which has handled on this loss issue so we'll now go to the next uh, slide yeah so <clears throat> here in the matter of kanailal kanailal pari pahil uh, pahilal jai balwani in the gujarat ar which is also famously now known as kanailal case so here the appellant actually is sending cakes and pastries to distributors and they are sent on display but what happens is as we know all these display cakes which are one or two in number they get you know they cannot be used and after maybe two to three days they are returned back to the original person who has actually manufactured them and the distributor gets a replacement of this so this is how it works so this particular uh, taxpayer they had uh, gone before the gujarat ar seeking a, uh, seeking a reply for the question that whether in this case they need to reverse the itc on the cakes and the pastry items that are getting expired okay on the cakes and pastry items that are getting expired and which have been returned to them so the double ar gujarat has has replied in the affirmative saying yes since this is a loss okay since this is a loss of the finished products so you will have to reverse the itc on the same though here when i was reading the entire judgment a wonderful idea came to my mind that think of the person who is now going to create a excel model for this to determine the loss you know the itc that has been lost because of all the expiry of the cakes and the pastries because there will be a lot of uh, permutations and combinations that how much has been used which product has been used which was the finished product what has come in what are the materials that have gone in because as we know as i have a client in cakes and pastries they use multiple inputs for a different kind of outputs so again it's a highly technical issue and which may be a bothersome issue maybe a uh, thumb hold you know uh, a thumb a particular the reason of the thumb will be taken and a reversal will be done by all these industries so now we'll go to the next item which is 17 5i next slide so here it is about uh, you know it's the taxes paid in case of fraud cases detention and confiscation that is in the case of 74 129 and 130 so this is again a unique case i have uh, been fortunate to handle some of these matters also so wherein what has happened in this case uh, it was a supplier from another state they gave us the material they gave the material to my client without charging any gst and later on we came to know that they were their vehicle was intercepted at a particular checkpoint and they had to pay the gst on the particular product because they were uh, sending something as exempted but that was actually not an exempted product as per the classification changes that had happened it was a taxable product and so they will be charging the gst on that so to this we said okay theek hai aap tax charge karke bhej do so when he charge when he charged the taxes to me he actually raised a fresh invoice and he said that i am going to charge this and it dikha aapko dena padega because this also i had to pay i had to pay uh, this to the authorities so i will claim from you both the gst so when my client who was not sure as to why double gst will be applicable on the same product he came to me i was surprised and i told the gentleman that please ask your vendor to go ahead and uh, clearly tell him that 175 is i i i is applicable here i am not bound to pay the penalty and the taxes that he has paid at the interception i am bound to pay the tax that he has been charging on the invoice on the only one time and i am going to pay that and i am going to i am going to avail the gst on that if he is doing that but since he is changing he is doing this after the interception and he is raising the fees after the interception i am not going to avail this particular itc and so i am not going to get the thing so here it is a simple case though this has been challenged in many forums there has been challenge in many forums that why it should not be allowed that is a different question altogether but the thing is that yes it's a matter of double double jeopardy wherein you are paying the tax once and uh, the taxpayer is getting the itc for that but the supplier when he is paying the second tax 
is not able to recover that from the recipient maybe maybe that is a matter of litigation but that is a cost which is to the company that it is coming and similarly for any matter which is coming under the 74 which is the case of fraud suppression or uh, miscommunication or deduction in that case also if so suppose what has happened is that i have not paid a tax on a particular uh, thing on a particular point of time at later point of time i have been told by the department that i have to pay tax on that and i go back to the client and say yes sir aapko is pe tax dena padega and i deposit that amount under as a, under drc 03 under 1074 so in that case when i am raising the invoice to the particular uh, person maybe that particular person cannot avail the particular itc on that because it is blocked by section 74 the tax paid under section 74 and because there is not a tax which i have paid in the normal situations so with this i'll go to the next slide yeah so thank you very much and i would really like to thank uh, advocate sujit gosh sir who has actually given lot of suggestions and advices on this particular topic and has guided me and of course i would like to thank my team members and others who have raised questions on the issues because of which i could include some more things here i would also like to thank gst corner for making this wonderful arrangement on this sunday evening it is a matter of surprising that we have so many attendees here and they could arrange this and we could discuss this very important topic on which a lot of notices are being raised already and we also need to be proactive and we need to check it beforehand that what we need to do about 175 and many thank many thanks to all the participants for giving 2 hours of their weekend to encourage myself and gst corner to continue all this discussion and as i have already shared a disclaimer that whatever we are sharing it's just a point of view and the error and the position of lawyers on date please do validate them as your point of thing and in case you need any for if you have any further doubts we can have the question answer session now but if you need anything to ask for me later on you can have my number and my email id in the slide uh, it will be there and the slide will be shared with you so thank you very much and over to arpit ji hello sir Uh, sir, we have some questions. Are the questions yeah. from the chat box, sir? Okay. Okay. So the first question is: Can the expired goods, expired date goods, be treated as natural loss inherent in the business? Some business will have effluent loss in material consumption, and some in product expiry. See, my personal view till now, uh, before the Kanhaiya judgment had come. was that all these losses say when i'm giving the cakes to the shops for display okay and as you have said there are affluent losses are there affluence losses are there these are the losses which will happen in the normal course of business and without these losses i cannot sustain my business because if i go to a pastry and cake shop i don't have the things on display one cake on the display then maybe at times the buyer will not feel the urge to buy the cake similarly you know in the case of some uh, liquid items when i am keeping them and i am having a natural loss like in in the case of beverages and i may have a natural loss which is effervescence and all so in that case what i feel is that since these are natural losses itc should not be reversed in this particular cases but since this uh, aa ar judgment has come now maybe there will be introspection by different judge by different departments and they may evaluate and think that whether there are different sectors they are reversing it or not and they may raise queries on this particular area question number 2 the place of employee is not registered under gst will gst itc be allowed yeah this is thank you thank you for raising this wonderful query i have already handled the uh, handled with the query regarding work from home and in work from home only we are getting this query from the clients that okay aru now, now i have given this uh, assets and all these things to the employees and they are utilizing it but you know the place of the employee is not registered as an additional place of business so can i actually get the itc for that so here i would like to uh, give the view that we need to understand that what is the purpose of sending all these things to the employee space the purpose is to run my business is to is in the course of furtherance of my business so here whether the place of the employee is registered as an additional place of business in my i gst registration or not that will not be a deterrent in allowing my itc for my, for the limited purpose that that particular place is not registered because it is really a cumbersome issue to include all the 900 addresses for in some cases 900 for one of my other clients they have around 2100 employees out of which they have got for around 1000 employees they have got work from home facilities done 
so in this case it's really a challenge to do it and we need to understand even i i'll i'll further go into another situation also uh, since this question has been asked and with arpiti i hope we'll we can take 10 minutes more extra for the questions i think that will not be a problem yes sir there is no such issue okay, okay. so i'll take another issue also here since this question of place of employees come so what we are seeing is that in the case of foreign companies now what they are doing is they are having resident managers okay so what are these resident managers doing they are staying in that they are say my house in that particular place only i am taking the gst registration and uh, the roc registration everything is happening and me and my wife we are the uh, say the directors and then we are taking some other employees and things like that so it is how the things are working so in this case also there have been doubts have been expressed that since this is the place of the director and he is staying there whether you know the itc can be availed for the rent and all other things that have been taken on here so we need to understand that it is fine that he is the director and he is staying there and all but we also need to understand that for the services that he is providing to the company in the terms of the rental accommodation the internet and all other services that he is providing he is also taking a service charge from the company and for that the company is actually charging uh, the and for that actually he is uh, charging a gst gst to this particular person to to the company and that's why whatever gst is being charged that will also be eligible to for senvet credit so here we need to understand that the place of the employee is not important we need to understand whether the place of the employee is being used for the purpose of business or not third uh, itc of a rent of cab service is available but in clause b1 it is written that itc of renting or hiring or of or motor vehicle is not available yes so here we need to understand that the rent a cab is a facility wherein i am taking the cab as a whole from the particular person and here what they are saying is about renting or hiring of the motor vehicles per se okay which is not available which is like say i am taking a ola or a uber i am just booking the cab i am renting that particular cab and i am dropping to that particular location but if i say that okay mr x please give me a car and i am going to actually stay in this i am going to use this particular car throughout the day and then at the end of the day i am going to leave this car from you know from i'm going to use it as per my own convenience that is becoming a renting or hiring of a motor car which is not available but the first situation which is renting of a cab that is available fourth itc available in case of motor vehicle used for supply of explosive is restricted for supply public persons yeah see since here explosives explosives is basically being uh, why it is being transferred it is, is it something it is, is it is it my goods which i am supplying or it is the explosives which i am transferring from one place to another just because i have to do some uh, activity at a certain place we need to do we need to check on this if it is the first thing that i am just doing it because it is the goods that i supply from you know from my business then in that case supply of explosives is not restricted okay but if it is so that i am actually uh, traveling and i am taking this explosive along with me from point a to point b where i am going to carry this particular activity along with the transportation of the passengers so in that case the itc will not be available but if i am tra i am transporting this goods in a go in a motor vehicle which is used for transportation of goods then there is no problem with that okay but if i am transporting this in a motor vehicle which is used for transportation of passengers and i am taking it along with me from point a to point b then in that case since this is not falling within the three exceptions in that case the itc will not be available as per next question as per section 175c or d itc is blocked for end user for example i am a painter contractor and providing services to mr b while providing i purchase paints from market so my question is itc to paint contract is available and to mr b it's not available as he is end user right but unfortunately there is a recent judgment in the case of kartikeya by uh, by an r there is a r ruling a double a r ruling by in the matter of kartikeya where it has been ruled i have not taken that ruling because uh, that is a ruling which i don't think personally uh, falls under the four quarters of the law because they are saying that when you purchase goods in your own account then you cannot get the itc on the same so in that case they are trying to say that if the painter buys the paint 
and then delivers this works contract service to the end user then he is not going to get the itc on the paint he has purchased i don't subscribe to this view because the law is very clear on this on his own account means the person who is going to ultimately use the particular product and why am i using this particular product why is a works contractor using this particular paint he is using this particular product for further supply he is not using this as on his own account for his end use he is using this paint for his own for at his own account for further supply and that's why there will be no restrictions in case of 175c of id in this particular situation next uh, itc for solar is available or not as per your deliberation under klf is available but in other case of uh, varacha cooperative yes yeah you have said about varacha cooperative they have said but since klf nirmal industries uh, they have gone through uh, the judgment of solaris also wherein it has been held wonderfully that why am i putting up this see solar panel i'll 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 put up some of the arguments uh, that i have put up in front of the department so uh, because in that particular matter the department has allowed us the itc on the uh, installation of the solar panel few arguments that i have taken first argument that i have taken is that it is not a part of the movable property why it is detachable i can detach it from this point of place and take it to any other point of place in my factory as and when i need from this factory to another factory as and when i need secondly why am i putting this panel i am putting this panel to generate electricity and why am i using this electricity i am using this electricity for producing my materials right whatever my end user end use is so going by the judgment of solaris and by the judgment of klf nirmal industries i think that itc on solar panel should be you should be available in the lot in the larger interest and another larger interest is that we have been uh, told again and again to go for non renewable renewable energy so even in the context of that i am also doing something for the environment protection and so in that context also we can say that this is something which i can say is to benefit the government and the public at large and so itc should be available in this particular situation so my personal view that i have taken uh, in case of my clients is that in case of installation of solar panel and this is even before the klf nirmal industries judgment was there i had taken the view that in case of solar panel we should get the itc because this is not forming a part of immovable property yes there are counter arguments that is attached and fixed affixed to the earth because with the screw driver but as, but as i gave the example of my table on which i am sitting right now it is also affixed to the earth through the screw driver through the screws so that it does not get shifted from one place to another but it does not mean that it loses his identity of being a movable asset now uh, going to the next question question number 7 if due to oversight place where goods are stored and supplied is not registered in gst registration can we get the place registered now yeah so this is again a litigation issue which is being coming up right now when uh, physical verification has started in many places as we all know that physical verification had started only for new registration but uh, even in some states along with new registration they are also doing physical verification for some of the taxpayers who are not paying taxes in the last 6 months or who are taking only itc but are not paying in output taxes or who have not been filing returns things like this in some risk factors they have uh, accumulated and based on those who are they are doing the physical verification so while doing this physical verification what they are coming into is that whether you have registered all your additional places of business or not they are asking that question because in case of one of my clients who are into a uh, retail boutique you know so in that in their case uh, when the department visited one of their boutiques which is their principal place of business uh, and asked them okay so how many boutiques do you have right now so they said that we have nine boutiques right now but they said in the your registration certificate it is showing only five so why have you not registered and things like that so there it is a thing that within 15 days we have to register all of our additional place of business but if you have not done it is advisable that you do it at the earliest because till now we are not seeing that any punitive or legal or any legal action has been taken for not adding uh, the additional place of business within the due time now coming to your second question whether because of this the itc can be denied i would believe that no for any kind of procedural aspects like see i am fulfilling what is section 16 telling me to do 
Section 16.2 has given me the uh, limits that I have an ITC. I have received the goods. I have paid it. The, the vendor has shown it in the returns. So if all these conditions are fulfilled, it does not matter whether that additional place of business is actually registered in my name or not. Why? Because I have ultimately used it in the furtherance of my business. And maybe by using that input, I've also done some output supply on which I've paid taxes. And also in the earth soil regime, in the matter of central, central excise, there is jurisprudence which has proved that without additional place of business also having been enrolled, you can always avail the ITC. It is not disputed that if the address is wrong or the place is not mentioned, then the ITC can be denied or blocked in any of the situation. Next is where a taxable person is paying tax at the time of detention of vehicle, even for technical mistakes in the document. Can he now adjust the tax by reporting the outward supplies, excluding such invoice, on which tax was already paid at the time of CVT vehicle insurance taken by the GTA IT. Okay, that is the next question. Okay, so one question is that, as I shared, uh, the ITC they have uh, reversed and uh, sorry, they have, they have been, the vehicle has been intercepted and ITC is being uh, the bill has been uh, already uploaded in the GSTR one, and again they have been paid. They have been made to pay taxes. So now they are saying that. What we will do is we'll just show one reporting. We will not show the earlier GCR one reporting. We will show the tax that we have paid to the government authorities for the defects in the EV bill. In this situation, I would like to say that we need to understand that the ITC under tax for the taxes paid under section 129 and 30 is restricted or blocked. That's why if you are pay, making any payment of taxes from the liability register and then later on showing it from the, you know, in the GSTR one and not paying it through your 3B, that may be a case of concern later on for the client wherein all these matchings that the way the matchings are going on, you know, the RFID matching and the way bill matching with your output supplies, inward supplies and things like that. The day is not far when it will be, when maybe we will have a matching wherein uh, the department will say that your vendor, such and such, had paid tax against this for this you know, violation. So please let us know whether you have availed ITC on the, that. So that's why we would suggest that whatever ITC is genuinely, genuinely due, let us pay only that and not any other ITC, uh, sorry, any other GSTR1 upload that we do, that, like the taxes that have been paid for, by us for violation of the way bill. Okay, and... CVT vehicle insurance services taken by GTA, ITA, ITC. See, yeah, so vehicle insurance services, when you are uh, taking it and you are providing uh, the services which are, uh, you know, for the supply of that particular vehicle, in that case, you can take it as it has been shared. So in that case, the ITC can be availed by you. Next is repair to building and not capitalized, then available. See, I'll tell you regarding this question, there are multiple doubts. So what is the question? Question is, I have carried out a major repair or a major renovation, like wall, mirror. I have an office in my office. I've renovated the entire wall, okay? And it costs me around one lakh. But I take it in repairs. I just show it in my PNL and I take the ITC benefit, okay? So here we need to see whether the accounting standards are not being violated, okay? We need to see whether the accounting standard regarding PP, like property plan and equipment, whether that has been properly followed. If that is being properly followed, and after that, we don't need to capitalize the asset. So in that case, you can jolly well avail the ITC by taking the head of expense under repair to building and showing it in your profit and loss account. Because as I've shared, the distinction that has been brought here in the capital goods is that it is only a goods which has been capitalized in the books of the person who is utilizing the credit. Okay, so if the person is uh, not the person who in those books is capitalized, then also he can utilize the credit. So to answer your question, yes, if you are doing repairs which are not capitalized and which can be as per accounting standards treated as repairs, then in that case, you can always take the ID, avail the ID on the same. Yeah, so next is whether ITC on insurance on commercial vehicle, which is used for own trading business of cement is available. See, since here they have uh, categorically mentioned in the case of 17.5b, if I may take you to 17.5b, once again, uh, sorry, 17.5ab. 
So what has there been written? ITC on input services of general insurance, servicing and repair, in so far as they relate to motor vehicles, aircraft or vessels, specifically allowed only when motor vehicles, aircraft, vessel is used for prescribed purposes, as mentioned in the clause A or clause double A, or received by person engaged in the manufacture, or received by person engaged in the further supply of general insurance. So we need to understand that since the transportation of goods clause has been actually removed from the clause 17.5a. So in my view, any expenses of general insurance servicing repair and all in relation to goods uh, for motor vehicles, for transportation of goods, they are all eligible because restrictions have been put in only for vehicles which are covered under 17.5a, 17 and 5AA. Okay, since the goods, motor vehicles for uh, use for transportation of goods have been taken out of the ambit of 17.5, in my view, they are also taken out of the ambit of 17.5 AB. In the case of cattle feed dealer dealing with need related goods and taxable service services, whether ITC on expenses or freight available on proportionate available. Okay, so this is a question relating to 17.2. So wherein it's about the apportionment of credit. So today we have been discussing about restrictions of credit, but again, yes, 17.2 is again a very important thing, which says about the apportionment of credit. So if I am availing, if sorry, if I'm supplying taxable goods as taxable supplies, as well as exempted supply, in that case, section 17.2 is restricting me by saying key, you can avail ITC only to the extent of taxable supplies. So, if you are making any exempted supply, to the extent of your exempted supply or common supplies, please do reverse the ITC, whatever is uh, to be reversed. So when you are making a supply of cattle feed, then what you need to do is you need to follow rule 42 and 43. You need to find out what is your total taxable supply. And please do bear in mind that your export supplies will be treated as a taxable supply also here. And find out what is your exempt supply, and then find out your ITC. From the ITC, deduct your IT for the ITC, which is related to your directly to all your taxable supplies. Then you get your ITC for the, for the exempted supply, which has to be uh, categorically denied. And then you get the ITC for common supplies. And this common supply has again to be reversed in the proportion of exempted supply to the total supply. So in case of exempt supply, we need to do the two things. First is for the direct supply, which are related to the exempt supply, we need to reverse them. And for the common supplies, which are there for both taxable and non-taxable supply, we are not sure. Suppose we have bought certain products and from there we have made a taxable supply and a non-taxable supply together, exempt supply together. In that case, it will be in the proportion of the non-taxable supply to the, sorry, the exempted supply to the total supply. And please bear in mind when you are doing the rule 42 calculation, another important thing is that exempt supply definition includes non-taxable supply definition also. So if it is a sale of land and building as per schedule 5B, you know, so you that will also come as a part of the exempt supply. Other, other uh, items maybe are excluded, but schedule uh, three items are included, excluded, but that is a part of the exempt supply. Apart from that, whatever non-taxable supplies you are doing, you know, selling of equities and all. So all these cases, whatever non-taxable supplies are there, please treat them as exempt supply and then do this reversal of the ITC. Next question, AC brought for office to give comfortable place to work to staff. Yeah, see, if this is, here we need to understand that why, whether the AC that I'm getting, that I'm getting as a one-off situation, or I'm getting it as a part of my works contract service, or it is coming as a part of the, you know, the renovation, the construction work that I'm doing. If it is a part of the construction work that I'm doing, the renovation I'm doing, and it is coming as a whole, in that case, it has been ruled again and again in many quarters that the, the ITC on the AC will not be available. But if the AC is purchased on a standalone basis and put in separately, then since the AC is a movable thing, though it is attached to the earth, fixed to the earth, but the dominant test is here is that it is not a works contract for a movable property. And therefore it will be uh, 
it is not it's not generating in the creation of removal property and so a standalone ac when it is purchased and fitted then in that case itc will be allowed okay now coming to the next question can itc be taken on ambulance purchase for planned hospital see here again we need to understand that here it is for transportation of passengers right and for capacity less than 13 percent so here we can take that uh, we have taken the view that since an ambulance is for transportation of passengers and with an approved sitting capacity of 13 passengers and we are using this but here only challenge is that what we are facing is that where because of which uh, many clients are not taking is is because that this particular service is not being in the provided in the exception of further supply okay of imparting the training and you know uh, of giving that other uh, part so that is not there so that's why of the transportation of the passengers so here what is happening is that we, the ambulance is being used for the safety and security of the office and that's why in many cases itc is not being availed okay in some of the aggressive so ideally itc should not be availed but in case of one or two of the aggressive taxpayers which we handle they have taken the view that this is for the transportation of passengers and with the approved seating capacity of less than 13 and i am transporting passengers only here in case of emergency and so i will avail the itc okay but going by a strict view literal a strict interpretation itc on ambulance should not be taken for the planned hospital also and more so because the planned hospital will be providing healthcare services okay so in that case even if you take that uh, take the itc it has ultimately to be reversed you know because most of the things were, will be reversed only on the medicines normally the hospitals they get their itc credit okay there is this amendment in section 1 yeah yeah rightly asked that there is a question that uh, in section 29 there is an amendment that uh, the 100% will be 100% of tax and 100% of penalty will become 200% of penalty so the query is that in that case why will an amendment not be made in 175i so in my view in that case since no tax will be payable so the question of availing itc in under section 175i will only not arise we already deliberated on this issue and uh, we had this point from the trade and we already given the representation on this but the view from the department is that when you are not paying any tax you cannot raise a tax invoice on the on the recipient then where will the question of 175i come in that particular situation so that's why maybe an amendment to that extent is not required but yes you have rightly pointed out uh, amendment in 175i should have been made to make it more clear uh, clear next question is rent a cab life insurance health insurance except where it is made obligatory by government so if it is mandated even by the local state authorities via geo or notification whether i yeah so as i have just shared that in case of uh, the health insurance like in case of our clients we have taken a view that since the government sop had clearly mentioned that you know that the uh, itc that the health insurance has to be taken medical insurance has to be taken for all the employees so we have taken the view that yes you have to actually uh, take the insurance policy and whatever itc is being uh, eligible for that particular thing you have to take it because it is mandated by the notification dated 15th of april wherein they have told that all offices all places of business all factories they have to abide by the sop given by the government so going by that uh, of course you have to you can uh, take out the you have to take out the health insurance policy and since it is an obligation the statutory obligation and that's why we are availing the itc on the same great arup sir uh, so it looks like arup sir has covered uh, the topic very exhaustively and covering the pro covering the professional issue in a very detailed manner it's honor for us that we have delivered such uh, your thought on such uh, matters on gst corner platform in between the webinar i have seen that professional from almost every state has joined to hear you sir is there anything you want to add to tell the professional before we end yeah i would just like to say one thing that 
uh, why 175 has been chosen as a topic is that now we when we are filing refunds or when these audits are happening or when this 2a 3b notices are coming in one of the main point of contention is 175 why suddenly we see that a client had taken itc on motor vehicles and they have not informed anybody and now when we are doing a 2a 3b reconciliation we are seeing that the motor vehicle itc is being taken and the department is also seeing that and the itc has to be reversed so similarly there are many other issues from 175 which needs to be located so maybe this is the point of time so when you can go back and check for all the three years because it is always uh, better to do your reviews before the government comes in and checks that done the review so that you know that you are ready whenever you are audit ready whenever the gst audit department is coming or whenever the inspections are happening and thank you everyone for actually staying here so long and thanks to gst corner once again uh, so more than 230 participants has been joined today uh, on i am very delightful to share the facilitation on behalf of uh, gst corner sir i request you to please accept this this uh, certificate for appreciation thank you thank you very much sir for giving such a wonderful webinar sir thank you very much thank you thank you very much thank you every professional who is attending this webinar today and we hope all will be safe which is pandemic and great stay happy stay thank you thank you we are closing this webinar